Uh, before we get started, some interesting information. 565 years ago, the first Bible was printed by Gutenberg. Something maybe you didn't know, he went broke over that project. Um, Ash Wednesday, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, that's the beginning of Lent. On either end of Lent, we have a story about a mountain. On one, it brings light. On the other, it brings darkness with men running away. Each one ha is quoting, each story has, um, is quoting a psalm, has a psalm being quoted in the story. Anyway, thought that was interesting. Long, long ago in a land far, far away, we find a man. His vision is a little foggy, to say the least. He wasn't sure he was breathing. All he knew was there was kind of a ringing or buzzing in his ears. He definitely couldn't move. He felt really warm, but he was frozen, couldn't move. He thought he was scared, frightened, but it was more than that. He was paralyzed. It was a paralyzing fear which was probably why he realized he was laying on the ground. Get up. Do not be afraid. Maybe that's how the disciples, Peter, James, and John, felt when that cloud came over top and the voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. They fell to the ground and they stayed there until Jesus touched them and said, get up, do not be afraid. Today, of course, uh, this, is, this story, of course, is Transfiguration of Our Lord. This is Transfiguration Sunday. We often think of this event as a mountaintop experience, which it is. But it's more than that. More important than the light show, at least I think, are the two commands that we are given in this story. I don't think we think about them that much. The first is given by God in that voice from heaven. Listen to him. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. I think we hear, this is my son, we hear the beloved, we hear with whom I'm well pleased, but I'm not really sure we hear listen to him. Or we don't hear it the way it was meant to be heard. By that I mean, in Hebrew, listen me is tied to obey. Listen and obey. Together, listen and obey. Do we hear that? It's like, I don't, I'm not sure we do. It's like the song, The Sounds of Silence. You know, people hearing without listening. It has been said many times, we hear, but do we listen? Do we listen and obey? We know, for example, we know we need a Savior, yet we're not so sure we want a Lord. We want Jesus to save us from sin, death, and the power of the devil or of evil, but we're not sure we want him telling us how to live our life. We don't want to obey. Save me, Jesus, just don't tell me what to do. By the way, that's the fall, right? That's the story of Adam and Eve. Didn't want God to tell them what to do. That's original sin, not wanting God to be our boss. We want to do what we want to do. 
So the voice from heaven says, this is Jesus, my beloved. Listen to him. Listen and obey him. The next command in our story builds on the first. We are to listen to Jesus and obey. Anybody remember what the command is that Jesus gives to the disciples? Get up. Do not be afraid. It's a command, but it's wonderful. Get up. Do not be afraid. When we face fear, we used to think there's only two possibilities, right? Fight or flight. Now we know, I guess Jesus always knew, there's fight, there's flight, and there's freeze. In the past, people who were frightened and froze were criticized and shamed. Like soldiers on a battlefield who froze. Or like women who, while being attacked, didn't fight back. Why didn't they fight back? It doesn't make sense. Well, because they froze. We didn't realize that that just some people respond to fear by just freezing. Most of the time, it's not as dramatic as what we find the disciples lying on the floor, unable to move. But fear can get in the way. It can get in the way for us reaching our potential or enjoying life to its fullest. How many times people, or even us, had the potential to do something, to be something, to experience something, but fear got in the way. We were afraid to do it. Jesus says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. It's a common message by Jesus and the angels. When people are afraid because they realize they are in the presence of the divine or in the, pre- in the presence of God, a lot of times they are afraid and the angels and Jesus say, do not be afraid. The voice from heaven tells them, the disciples, that they are in the presence of God, but they don't have to be afraid. Jesus is telling us that we are in the presence of God the presence of God, and we do not have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of him or anything else. Now, Peter wanted to build some dwelling places for Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, partly because he wanted to stay with them. He wanted the security of being with them. And Jesus is saying, you don't have to be, you don't have to build any dwelling places so that I'll stay with you. I'm going with you. Get up. Do not be afraid. Next time you and I are afraid of a situation, an opportunity, what would it be like if we pictured Jesus saying to us, get up, don't be afraid. Just imagine the difference that that would make. Get up, don't be afraid. Whatever the situation is, the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Get up, do not be afraid. Amen.